Hello and welcome to the Bazaar of Moxology, a video series devoted to the art of eternal magic. If you'd like to support this series, please throw me a subscribe on YouTube and consider supporting me on Patreon as well. On that note, cue the music. Hello and welcome to the Bazaar of Moxology. This is the very first episode of this series, and we are a series focused on eternal magic in all its forms. This covers everything from vintage, legacy, to even old school formats such as 9394, and even middle school format. We're going to be talking about a lot, but primarily our focus is going to be on one of magic's greatest formats, and that format is the format I love so much, and that's vintage. Vintage is a format that I just absolutely adore. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about that. In fact, this month we're going to be talking about uh, a, a vintage league uh, that I did recently uh, that I managed to post a 5-0 trophy result with uh, on a deck known as Vintage Elementals. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting uh, to talk about this deck. However, first of all, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some things that have been going on in the vintage world. Uh, namely, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the vintage restrictions that occurred most recently, uh, simply because uh, it's good to talk about these things and talk about where the format's been since these cards were restricted. So one of the first things that uh, obviously was on the restricted list is Karn the Great Creator. Uh, Karn is a very, very egregious card. Uh, I'm glad that they really I restricted this card, honestly. Uh, it was not very fun to play against, uh, unfortunately. And uh, it did a lot of really busted stuff. Uh, so I'm really glad that they earned it. And things have been a little bit better uh, in the format since Karn has gone away. Uh, and by gone away, I mean really gone away uh, with uh, being restricted. Even as a one-of, it's strong, but it's not like overpoweringly strong. And in fact, it's somewhat mostly unplayable. So uh, Catch-22, they almost effectively banned it from the format almost. Uh, you still see it show up here or there. Like there are certain shops decks that want to play it. Uh, there are certain variants of stacks and those sorts of things that want to play it. But yeah, for the most part, the numbers on the Karn are very, very low. Uh, the other card that came up that was very interesting that see get restricted was Mystic Forge. Uh, I was also pretty happy that they restricted this as well. Uh, Mystic Forge is one of those cards that uh, even without uh, Karn, even even in a world where they might have restricted Mishra's Workshop, uh, this card is really, really gross. Uh, with all the fast artifact mana in the format, this card is just absolutely insane. Uh, and I'm glad, kind of glad they, they pushed it to a one of. As a one of, it's pretty good. It's pretty strong. Uh, it's actually pretty good enough for the shop decks to run as a one of, uh, so that they have some late game draw potential even. So that's something that I was pretty happy to see, but uh, not as happy to see as uh, one of the other cards that they restricted. And that was, of course, Mental Misstep. I've long been a big fan of not really liking Phyrexian mana. Uh, Fraxian Mana has been on the top of my list as one some of the best, worst denying mistakes in the format ever. Uh, in the game ever, honestly. I, I just really dislike Fraxian Mana. So uh, when they announced that Mental Misstep was restricted, I was really, really happy about it. I was, uh, it's been time uh, for it. Uh, and even then, despite the fact that Mental Misstep is now restricted, uh, a lot of the format feels very, very genuinely fair. There is a lot of Jeskai and a lot of Xerox and a lot of various builds of those kinds of decks that are absolutely playable. Uh, and it's because Misstep is, was kind of not holding those back stacks back a little bit because uh, by having to run Misstep and having to participate in what's effectively known as the Blue Arms Race, uh, you have to devote a lot of your deck to fighting the other blue decks, which means you have to have cards like you know, Mental Misstep in order to fight those decks. And uh, it kind of leaves you a little soft to other decks like Workshops and Dredge and that sort of thing. Well, 
now that we don't have to do that so much anymore outside of Narset Parter Avails, which is obviously a card that has to be uh, attacked on the axis of Pyroblast and that sort of thing. Uh, that's, it, it's a little bit nicer. You get a little bit more interaction. You can uh, play a little bit more cards that deal with shops. You can play a little more cards that deal with dredge. Uh, a lot of those same cards also deal with uh, decks like Paradoxical Outcome. So it's a, it's a, this was a good positive thing for the format. And so far, I'm pretty happy with the format as it stands. Uh, and then they also uh, took a step further, and they also uh, restricted Golgari Grave Troll. And I was... I'm not sure how I felt about this one, but uh, I can see, understand the reasoning why they did so. Uh, Gar Dredge has been for a while uh, pretty pretty wild and pretty busted, and I'm, I, it did need to be reined in a little bit. So uh, I'm okay with them making this restriction. Uh, of course, uh, the one big thing to note is that they did unrestrict Fast Bond, and that has been a thing uh, over the couple weeks. Fastbond has actually proven itself to be like one of the most safest restrictions they could have possibly done, uh, and I'm pretty happy with it, uh, simply because it's opened up a lot of space for a lot of different decks to show up in the format. Um, I myself in this league, we're going to talk about this month with Elementals, where I was actually played against uh, several Fastbond piles uh, in that league. Uh, I've seen them a lot online. Uh, they haven't really totally shown up really in the challenges other than a few really good placings by uh, a deck uh, that we have affectionately now called Zeus Bond uh, based on uh, a good friend of mine uh, named Zeus who is the uh, developer of that variant of deck. Uh, Zeus Bond is more of a fast bond shell that plays uh, prison elements with Mistress Workshop in order to power out things like Crucible of Worlds in order to be able to go infinite, that sort of thing. Uh, it's a really cool deck. Uh, it did uh, place in the top four of the last Legacy or the last Vintage Playoff format. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it was really neat to see that do well. So uh, I, this was a good restriction. I'm just really happy with it. Uh, so uh, we find ourselves in a bit of a, a, a more interesting brave new vintage uh and things have been uh pretty good as, as of late so uh with vintage kind of being where it's at right now uh it's had a lot of opportunity to to really uh sit and brew uh in the format and i think that part is uh pretty interesting uh and of course we're going to spend a lot of time talking about that this month uh because uh it, this is a pretty cool deck uh, i'm pretty happy with it I'm going to bring up the deck list here. Uh, so this deck is known as Xerox Elementals. And this deck is pretty cool. Uh, it's a really neat deck. Uh, it does a lot of very interesting stuff. Um, basically, the, the main interaction of the deck is uh, between the cards Young Pyromancer and uh, Risen Reef. Uh, Risen Reef is a card from Magic 2020 that says uh, whenever it or another elemental enters the battlefield, you look at the top card of your library, and if the top card of your library is a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield tapped. Uh, however, if you don't put a card onto the battlefield this way, you put it in your hand instead. Uh, the way that that's worded is really weird, but uh, basically what it means is uh, whenever an elemental or it comes into play, you get to look at the top card of your library and say, is this a land? If it's a land, do I want to put it on into the onto the battlefield tab, or do I just want to put it in my hand, or is it not a land and I j it just goes to my hand? Uh, so this is a way of drawing cards uh, without actually using the word draw. Uh, and that's where I think I like this card uh, a lot, is that you can actually uh, get around cards like Narset, Parter Avails, which says that you can't draw more than one card per turn. You can get around that by playing this card that says, I'm just going to put this card in my hand instead. Uh, and what that does is with a lot of the free interaction in the format, uh, cards like Young Pyromancer, uh, suddenly every spell you're casting uh, is triggering a Risen Reef, and you're going to be able to draw a bunch of cards that way. So uh, the rest of the deck is mainly uh, 
pretty minimally mostly a Xerox shell. So it's a rug Xerox shell. Uh, so you're getting to play cards like Ponder. You're getting to, getting to play your single to Ponder. You're getting to play Ancestral Recall. You're getting to play Brainstorm, Taxi, and Probe. Uh, you do get to play Gush, uh, Preordain, all those kinds of cards that you would expect to see in a typical Xerox list, Dig Through Time, uh, Treasure Cruise, that sort of thing. Uh, you also get to play a couple copies of Narset. It's pretty much required for most of these blue Xerox decks to play Narset at this point. That's a topic for a different day. Uh, we won't go too much into why Narset is the way it is, but it is a card that is pretty powerful. Uh, so you do want to play at least a couple copies of it. Uh, we're also playing a couple copies of Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Uh, it's an interesting card. Uh, it is a rare Planeswalker from Magic 2020. Uh, and basically it has an ability that... The, the most important ability on the card uh, is one of its zero abilities, which says that you create two 1-1 elemental creature tokens with haste, and then you sacrifice them at the beginning of your next end step. Uh, so... What that does is in conjunction with Risen Reef usually draws two to three card, two to four cards, depending on how many Risen Reef are in play, that sort of thing. Uh, so that in itself is very powerful. Uh, however, her negative two ability uh, lets you flashback an instant or sorcery with uh, CMC two or less uh, from your graveyard uh, immediately. Uh, so it's very good for flashing back cards like Time Walk, uh, which Time Walk with a deck like this is really actually pretty important. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, this is basically a Xerox tempo strategy. Uh, your goal in the long run of the short of the game is to stick a threat, uh, protect the threat, and ride it to victory. And uh, quite often that threat is you know, Pyromancer being able to make tokens which go wide uh, to be able to uh, put the damage on the opponent and put a clock on the opponent. Using Time Walk can often ensure that you're winning the game that next turn. Uh, so that's pretty powerful, and Chandra being able to flash it back is exceptionally powerful because you can set up a turn where you can flash it back and you're going to win that very next turn. In addition, because this is a rug deck, we are getting to play cards like Lightning Bolt. We are getting to play cards like Pyroblast, main deck Pyroblast. Uh, we're also getting to play uh, cards like main deck Ancient Grudge uh, and also Veil of Summer. Uh, Veil of Summer is very cool. Uh, card is really neat. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, design of the card uh, as a blue-black hate card uh, that exists in green. Uh, I'm pretty happy that they're getting back to some of these color hate effects in uh, these uh, new standard cards that are coming out, like Veil of Summer. Uh, this card's from Magic 2020, and, and basically it says uh, that you get to draw a card if your opponent cast a blue or black spell this turn, uh, but then also uh, you and permanent you control get hexproof from blue or black spells, and also your spells for the rest of the turn can't be countered. Uh, and so this can be really strong to winning counter wars, but this can also be really strong to protecting your creatures from uh, things like Abrupt Decay. Uh, it can effectively uh, counter Abrupt Decay uh, by making it a not illegal target. Uh, it can also protect you against from Storm by uh, making it so they just can't tendrils you for a turn. Uh, and that may just give you the time you need to win the game. Uh, also in the deck list, I, I also uh, tried out a singleton copy of uh, our new favorite two-mana Planeswalker, Renin-6, uh, which turned out to be pretty good. I was pretty happy with it every time Renin-6 came up. Uh, I even did get to uh, put a portion of the game where uh, I got to Renin-6 uh, strip mine lock uh, out an opponent. Uh, granted, strip mine lock as best as you can because there are mocks in and all that sort of thing, but keeping them off of blue sources of mana by using red and six to ensure that uh, when all they had was a white, a mox pearl and a mox ruby. Uh, and that really helps with rebuying things like fetches and strip mine and that sort of thing. Uh, it's just a big, powerful card, uh, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, Sideboard-wise, uh, this deck packs a lot of the normal, typical stuff you would see in a uh, Xerox-type deck. Things like Ravenous Trap, uh, Collector Oof has also become a really big card in uh, the vintage format, uh, as it is very, very good against things like Paradoxical Outcome, uh, Workshops decks, that sort of thing. 
uh, Graf Duker's Cage. Uh, Graf Duker's Cage is awkward a little bit if you're playing Chandra, but if you're in a ma match where you really need the Graf Duker's Cage effect, you're probably not having Chandra in your deck, uh, like Dredge, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, she doesn't really do much in that matchup. Uh, Shattering Spree, uh, I put in a Singleton Reclamation Sage in the deck just simply because I wanted to test it, but also because I wanted something that would blow up Fast Bond or even Leyline of the Void. I have ran into people bringing in Leyline of the Void against my deck uh, because of Renin Six, because of Chandra, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, I've also seen people coming up with it against uh, Jeskai, so if they think you're on Jeskai, they may bring it in anyways. Uh, at first, uh, but uh, just something like that. Uh, pulverize. I'm not too thrilled with pulverize. Uh, I've haven't had a real opportunity where it would have been good. Uh, I feel like I may end up cutting in. I may probably end up putting in the force lightning bolt on the sideboard at that point. Uh, but I also am hedging towards trying out a copy of sulfur elemental uh, in the sideboard, and mainly because uh, one of the biggest. Uh, ways that this deck loses is by other decks that go wide and uh, Monastery Mentor decks tend to go a lot wider and a lot taller at the same time and so I really 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 uh, think that Monastery Mentor decks are really hard for this deck so I probably really want to try uh, Sulfur Elemental to see how that works uh, but it's been, a, it's been a really fun deck uh, it's uh, very interesting to play uh, so I encourage you that if you want to try it out, please try it out. Uh, and for now, we're going to go to uh, our matches and kind of talk through the matches uh, as they go on uh, and kind of give an idea of what was going through our head, how we managed to approach this game, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll be right back in a few minutes with match one. Uh, of uh, this league uh, and then uh, we're going to do some follow-up stuff at the end and then we'll wrap it up all right so we're going to step through the first match of our vintage elementals league uh, this game one of match one versus bug midrange. Uh, so we did win this match, obviously, because this is a 5-0 league. Uh, but we did uh, have some interesting games. Uh, so we were on the draw here. And I really like this hand uh, because this hand has a force will for turn one interaction uh, in case something were to go wrong. There's double Risen Reef here. Uh, we're not going to be too upset if we pitch one of these Risen Reef to Force of Will. Uh, we don't really want to pitch Dig Through Time or Brainstorm just yet. We probably want to cast one of those. Uh, we'll pitch Dig Through Time to a later Force of Will if we have to. Uh, and uh, so but we're going to go ahead and keep this. Our opponent actually mulligans to six. Uh, and that's not a bad thing for us. Uh, so they're going to start their turn off with a Mock Sapphire, Mox Jet. Underground Sea. And they're going to try for a turn one Narset Parter of Veils. Uh, so Narset, while it's, you know, Risen Reef gets around it, that sort of thing, uh, there are two cards in hand. Uh, we don't really want them to eke much value out of this Narset. Uh, we want them to not really be able to get anything off of it. Uh, and if we let it stick, it's going to get more value. So uh, at this point, uh, we do need to force a will this, and we'll go ahead and pitch one of the Risen Reefs. There's no downside here. They could have had a force plus blue card in hand, but the way that they started that hand off, it seems really doubtful. Uh, and with Helly having two cards in hand, now we're up ahead in cards at this point. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where we want to be. Now granted, our turn's not going to be fantastic here. We're going to cast a Mox Emerald, and a Tropical Island, and we're going to pass turn. Our, our opponent is going to try and cast Deathrite Shaman, which is fine. We don't have any way of answering it right yet. Um, that card could be problematic uh, if we are attempting to resolve anything later on, like Dig, or just in general, it's a problematic card. <laughs> uh, 
So we have the opportunity here to cast Risen Reef, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fetch a, a red source. And we're going to cast this Risen Reef. This Risen Reef is going to draw us a strip mine. I generally, when it comes to Risen Reef triggers, uh, if it's not worth it to put the land into play, uh, I won't. Uh, I will just draw the card. Uh, there's no opportunity cost there uh, to put a strip mine into play uh, at that point. Uh, and it's not going to do anything. So it was just smarter, honestly, to draw it. Yeah, maybe it puts us up a mana next turn, but it doesn't really do much else. Uh, and it being not very good against this Deathrite Shaman is kind of awkward. So now our opponent, they cantripped a couple times with a Preordain, two Preordains, and they are casting a 4-5 Tarmograve. That's pretty good. Tarmograve's, Tarmograve's a pretty good magic card. Uh, but they have zero cards in hand, uh, so we'll see if we can find something to do with that. Uh, okay. Uh, if we can find a red source, we can cast Chandra. Uh, and that would be pretty good. And Chandra does indeed find us uh, a fetch for a red source. We did that instead of taking the mountain because we don't really want... don't care about the other thing. We could have taken Master of Waves, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We're going to draw two cards here anyways. Uh, so the Force of Will, that's pretty good. Uh, and Flood of Strand, I'm just going to put it in hand because I generally put fetches in hand. Uh, it's also a bit of a bluffing thing with Risen Reef. Uh, if you're not putting a land into play, uh, they must assume that you put some action into your hand uh, or a non-land card, and that could be sort of bluffing with this deck. Uh, make them believe that you have something worth that is going to be played or is going to be good. Uh, so my opponent here... They are going to try for uh, Dig Through Time. They have one card in hand, and that is all they're going to do here is attempt to dig. Dig is a pretty good card, and with them having zero cards in hand, uh, nothing going on uh, elsewise, uh, we're going to go ahead and force all this. Uh, we'll, we'll sacrifice our own Dig Through Time uh, to stop a Dig Through Time. Uh, then inadvertently... Uh, takes Tarmogoyf out of being able to kill Chandra this turn, uh, which is uh, pretty awkward. Uh, so being able to untap with a whole bunch of mana, being able to cast Chandra, or, or activate Chandra at this point, uh, is going to be pretty good. We're going to draw a bunch of cards. Uh, so our opponent did concede at this point, uh, so we didn't really get to see what we drew, but I felt reasonably happy with this turn as it was progressing. We get to Chandra, draw two two cards. Uh, probably those cards are all probably pretty good. Uh, hopefully we hit like a young Pyromancer or something like that uh, and be able to use that to protect Chandra. Uh, so that would be the goal, at least. All right, we're going to go over to game two here of this match in just a second. On to game two of this match versus bug midrange on vintage elementals. Uh, so we're going to step through this here. We were on the draw again because we won game one. Uh, so this hand actually seems pretty okay. Uh, it's got some interaction. Uh, turn one force negation. Uh, if we need it, uh, we can daze uh, next turn if we want to uh, draw with preordain, uh, it doesn't stop anything like super busted, uh, and it doesn't stop this like death ray shaman. Uh, but these fair matchups, you can reasonably be okay in certain games, especially bug. Uh, they're not going to do nothing super insane. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to Volk preordain and see these. Island and Scalding Tarn, and we have a t boatload of mana in our hand already, uh, so we're going to bottom both of those. Uh, and we draw a Risen Reef, so that in itself is A-OK. -okay. 
We're going to pass the turn. Get days up if we need it. Force negation if we need it. Uh, I would hate to have to pitch something to that, but I would pitch the Resin Reef if I had to. Uh, they are doing nothing and passing turn, so that's cool. Uh, strip mine is pretty good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and preordain. Uh, and again, more mana, so we're going to bottom both of those. Uh, Mox Ruby. Uh, so we're going to strip mine their uh, tropical. Doesn't do a ton here because Deathrite Shaman, but it is putting the pressure on them to use Deathrite Shaman. Uh, so, got to hope that that's at least pretty good. Uh, the awkward thing comes if uh, we end up in a situation where uh, we have to deal with Deathrite versus Renin 6 if that comes up, but they are going to hit us for two with Deathrite Shaman, which seems okay. Tropical Island and doing nothing still. So, it seems kind of amusing. Uh, okay. So, we're going to go ahead and cast this Risen Reef here. Seems pretty good. It reveals to us a Narset, part of our Veils. So, we have a couple blue cards we can pitch to um, Force of Will, Force of Negation. Uh, I would not be adverse to getting rid of Narset if we had to. Uh, they're going to go ahead and hit us for two again with Deathrite Shaman tr ability. And... Preordain. I mean, they're just kind of doing a whole lot of nothing. That is Ancestral Recall. That seems pretty good. Uh, we're going to go and play Chandra first and see what Chandra gets us. Let's see if we can draw some cards. But they have a response. Oh no, Abrupt Decay. What? Alright. Well, we're going to Ancestral in response in case they have uh, a yeah, Force Negation because we can easily just get rid of that. And now we're up on cards. Oh no. My poor Risen Reef. He died. Okay. Oh, we'll just attack with these 1-1s. One -ones. And they have to block one. Pass the turn. we got some options in our hand now. We have a Brainstorm. There's a Daze. Uh, that seems halfway decent. Uh, they're actually going to use Deathrite Shaman for ma mana. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing here. Uh, probably resolving a Delve spell, uh, but since I didn't see two blue sources tapped, I'm going to guess it's Treasure Cruise. Click through and get to the Treasure Cruise. Yay! And Ancestral Recall. That's fine. And uh, now they're going to attempt to Assassin's Trophy. Uh, my Chandra, they are now tapped out. We're going to go ahead and daze that bad boy. Gets rid of that. Alright. So we're going to go to our turn. We have Force and Negation in hand. Uh, go ahead and cast uh, Young Pyromancer. Going to use Chandra's negative 2 and cast Ancestral Recall from the graveyard. So that's pretty good, being able to generate a token plus draw three cards. And they don't have a response to this. So now we've got some options here. We have Veil of Summer up. Uh, we've got Metal Mist up. We could Brainstorm. Uh, the only bad thing is that Force Negation doesn't hit creatures if they cast like a Tarmogoyf or something like that. But we have a Young Pyromancer, so uh, Tarmogoyf ends up being not so great. 
we're going to go ahead and Metal Mist up this, pa this Preordain. Generating tokens for uh, attacking uh, is pretty good here. Ooh, true name nemesis. I guess we have to brainstorm. And we whiff on this brainstorm, but... The thing, thing about true name nemesis that's really kind of fun and interesting is it somehow doesn't really uh, do so hot against young pyromancer either, like much like Goyf does. Uh, and it's simply because um, there's the fact that uh, the elementals can swing through uh, in multiples, and they still has to block at least one. Uh, so that can be problematic uh, at times. Uh, now, I probably should have cast this second Young Pyromancer first, just to get more value out of this, like, Ponder. Uh, I just didn't think about it at the time, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, but that ponder is pretty good. Uh, gets us this um, lightning bolt, which we're gonna bolt this death right shaman. Because um, quite frankly, this death right shaman is going to combine with the true name with lit end us the game, and so that needs to go away. Uh, so they didn't have a way, to, so nothing to do for the death right shaman. So that's fine. Uh, now we're going to cast the second one, and of course, again, we should have cast it already before this, and we would have really accelerated our clock, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and attack. There's no downside in attacking here. Uh, we're going to push some combat damage through, and we're going to sacrifice some elementals. Alright, so our opponent is going to attempt a Demonic Tutor, and I really want to push through the damage at this point. Uh, if they're Demonic Tutoring, they're searching for something to try and end the game, and quite frankly, I don't care what that is, uh, I just want them to die. And they're probably going to get another uh, Force Negation, or another uh, True Name Nemesis, uh, and that would be okay, but uh, us having uh, multiple answers to the uh, stuff like this Pyroblast uh, for a Force of Will is going to be pretty good here. And it stops this Demonic Tutor. And, of course, our opponent conceded the match at this point. Uh, you can see we've got quite a bit on board. Chandra's going to make another two Elementals. He may even attack and kill Chandra, uh, which is fine uh, if we lose Chandra. Uh, at that point, we're still gaining a lot of uh, equity here on board uh, if that happens. So that is the end of match one of this league. Um, so we're going to go on to match two here shortly. Thanks. All right, so now we're on to match two of this Vintage League on Vintage Elementals. And... This match ended up being against Jeskai Dreadhorde Control, uh, one of the more uh, popular uh, Xerox decks uh, that are in the format now. Uh, Jeskai deck utilizing Narset, utilizing Dak Faden usually, utilizing Dreadhorde Arcanist, uh, and Monastery Mentor to try and get what it needs to get done. Uh, so we won the die roll on this game, uh, and that's pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. This hand is fantastic. Uh, there's turn one young pyromancer in this hand, and that's amazing. And then an upkeep ancestral recall. Uh, and so that's legit. Pretty happy about that. Not only that, upkeep ancestral recall plus pyroblast. Uh, and that's pretty groovy. Uh, so I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, basic island. Ooh. Uh, Preordain. And they do nothing else. And... They're passing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try for this Upkeep Ancestral. Uh, which gives us a trigger... 
they're going to attempt to Force of Negation. So we have a Pyroblast back up, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and we get to resolve this. Uh, this draws us uh, a Mental Mist up and a Force of Negation. Uh, and a Flooded Strand. So, and a Risen Reef. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fetch. We're going to preordain. Gets us Mox Emerald Strip Mine. We're going to draw that Strip Mine. Strip Mine is going to be really good here in a second if they don't draw another land. Uh, even if they do draw another land, uh, it's still going to be pretty good, especially if they fetch a non basic. Uh, so that's helpful. Uh, Tundra. Okay. Uh, time Walk. I'm okay with exiling to get rid of a Time Walk at this point. Uh, I have enough elementals on board that I really just want to uh, develop a board state. Uh, and so that's going to be really good. We're going to go ahead and we're going to strip his tundra. Their tundra. And we're going to go ahead and cast Risen Reef. And that gives us a treasure cruise, which we can't cast yet. Uh, but we have enough elementals on board. We're going to attack and get them down to 12. And pass their turn. Now, Solitary Island. They're going to try for an Ancestral Recall here. They have four cards in hand. They could have a Counterspell for this. But honestly, uh, the tempo is real. Uh, they want to basically climb out of the back out of the game uh, by resolving an Ancestral. Ancestral is a scary card to have resolved, uh, so we're going to go ahead and force it. Uh, and, of course, they end up conceding to that. What's going to happen at that point is the Young Pyromancer trigger is going to draw us a card off of uh, Risen Reef, uh, and then uh, they, they will lose that Ancestral Recall. And, of course, that's pretty good because now we're at... Uh, you know, five elementals on board, uh, so that's swinging in uh, at least eight the next turn, uh, followed by another swing uh, the next turn to end the game, uh, depending on what we draw the coming turns. Uh, so it's just a, a snowball effect, and I think it worked out really well for us to be that aggressive with the tempo, uh, just because of being able to get on board quickly. Uh, really, that turn one Young Pyromancer is really what did this for me. Uh, so let's gonna go on to game two. Alright. Alright, so we are gonna be Looking at match game two of match two of this Just Kai matchup, uh, we were on the draw here uh, simply because uh, we won game one. Uh, so this hand seemed pretty good. Uh, we're definitely going to keep it. Uh, it. Has a turn one uh, young pyromancer, so that could be pretty decent here. Uh, our opponent is going to go for a turn one time walk. Uh, we have nothing really to stop a really insane turn uh, out of this deck. But um, we just got to hope it doesn't happen. Uh, so their time walk turn didn't really do, do a whole lot. So that seems okay, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to cast Mox Emerald, uh, Flooded Strand, Volk, try for this young Peasy. And hope that they don't have like a Swords of Plowshares or something like that. And they do. There's my, goes my young Peasy. All right, fine. There, the flood of strand and passing turn. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and try for this uh, young pyromancer again, and of course they're gonna force will it. Which is fine, because they were probably going to force a will. The, um... Narset, anyways. Uh, they're, they get to resolve Dig Through Time. Uh, in response to my preordain. 
Uh, we'll, we'll take the Gush. That seems okay. Gush is a pretty good card. Very powerful magic card, Gush is. And they get to resolve an Ancestral. And this deck's titular card, Dreadhorde Arcanist. Uh, this card's very powerful. Uh, and it just being on the board makes it really hard to deal with. Uh, so we're really going to have to try and figure out how to best to deal with this. So we're going to try for this Gush here. And we're going to force a will to Gush. We're going to try for this Narset. Well, it's something. I cast this Lotus. And pass the turn. And he's gonna pyroblast the Nar they're gonna pyroblast the Narset. And using Dreadhorde Arcanist to flashback Ancestral Recall, which is exceptionally powerful. They're in our set. They revealed a Dak Faden with that. So, what we really have to do here is, is just try and resolve this Risen Reef. I guess it's Strip Mine. Try and resolve this Chandra. And they have a Force Negation with Chandra. So that's problematic. We're in a bad spot here, and so that's... We just ended up conceding. Uh, Dak Faden plus Narset. Uh, it's just... We were not going to win this game at all. Uh, once Dreadhard Arcanist hit the table, uh, we weren't even going to be able to block this thing. Uh, they were just going to Pyroblast my Risen Reef with it. Uh, so uh, that was... It's pretty strong. So... So let's go ahead and go to match game three of the second match and check that out. Alright, so now we're on to game three of match two of this Vintage Elementals League. Uh, and so this match being against uh, Just Guy Dreadhorde, uh, we are on the play uh, for game three since we've got, uh, since we lost game two. Uh, so we ended up keeping this hand. Uh, it does have a turn one Narset, uh, and honestly I wasn't about to let go of that. Uh, so we ended up fetching a Tropical and trying to go for this turn one Narset. And we get to resolve a turn one Narset. So we get to have a, a Force Will uh, up for their turn. And that seems pretty good to me, uh, to have a turn one Narset. Shuts off a lot of interaction. Uh, of course, they're going to try and Pyroblast. I've got a Force Will. I forced it instead of mental mistapping. I did not want to pitch uh, the dig through time at all. I kind of wanted to be able to eventually resolve the dig through time. Uh, so now we're going to strip mine the volcanic island and do the thing with Narset. Double force of will right on top. Seems pretty good. We have a pyroblast if we need it. Now we can pitch force to force if we need it. Not a whole lot going on so far in this game. Uh, really, at this point, we're just kind of hoping to trade resources and stop him from resolving. Stop them from resolving uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist. So, as much as possible. Uh, we do have enough cards in the yard now to try for a dig through time. Uh, so we'll see if they have a way to stop this dig through time. 
No, they do not. So we're going to get this young Pyromancer, Risen Reef. Draw another Risen Reef. Seems okay. Risen Reef gets us Force and Negation. Which is pretty okay as well. Lotus. Narset. They revealed Mental Misstep. And they are going to attempt to resolve uh, Dig Through Time. Uh, we're going to force that. Or no, actually, we just let it resolve. Sorry. I thought we had attempted to force force that. So we might as well just cast this other Risen Reef and draw two cards. The best thing that could happen here is that we hit two lands. <laughs> uh, preordain. So we have a preordain for the for something. Just gonna go ahead and we attacked the Narset so to get it off the board. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, they're gonna pirate blast my Narset. I don't really care about my Narset being gone. Gush is problematic. We could probably... <laughs> yeah, so they, they just source the plowshares and bolt my Risen Reef. Uh, and that's really all they have to do. I uh, guess we just play this Young Pyromancer. A lot of counterplay in this game. Uh, we spend a lot of time just kind of chilling back and forth in turns and doing a whole lot of nothing uh, which is pretty pretty hilarious uh, I'm gonna fetch Let's see what we got going on here uh, well there's a Chandra so we can cast Chandra and we'll attack And get them down to 13. Swords of Plasher is my young Pyromancer. No! Alright, they have two cards in hand, so we just have to kind of get there. Uh, there's Daze. Uh, Daze is not great right now, unless they I don't know, try to resolve something super game ending. So it's going to do a whole lot of nothing. No reason to really play out this tropical island at this point, or this this volcanic island. Uh, Taxian probes fine. Uh, still doesn't see anything, so uh, we're at, and the plan of of attack with Chandra tokens. Hey, look, there's a Renin six, so that's pretty good. Uh, so we get to uh, recur this uh, scalding tarn, make two elementals attack. Get in there for some damage. Put them to nine. Uh, of course, running six is going to let us fetch uh, this turn. Uh, still nothing. Not even a dread horde or a, uh, anything. Uh, fetch. Now we're on the plan of being able to get back whatever we need to fetch with. Uh, we're gonna try preordain. And they're gonna mental misstep the preordain. They they don't want us to draw any cards at this point. Uh, so we're gonna make two elementals and sick them in there for damage. And they still have nothing. This is wild. Uh, we're gonna fetch. So we can shuffle our library. It's a ponder. Get in with some elemental swingings. And we're gonna down tick Ren to uh put some damage on in in motion. I suspect that they may have some counter magic in hand, so I'm just not even gonna bother with the ponder and just get 
on board with damage as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, at this point, fetching is really, really bad for them. Uh, so that can be problematic here. Because uh, if they fetch, they could just lose. Uh, either way, we're going to put them to one life uh, by running them. Uh, we're going to attack. Shut off their ability to use both fetch lands at the same time. Or activate Ren. They have a bolt for Ren. That's fine. Puts them to one. No sense in casting anything. We have Days Pyroblast. Pyroblast is really the big big deal here. Uh, but they can't fetch now. Uh, and that's pretty good. They also can't force a will. Uh, so they ended up conceding to that at that point. Uh, so that's the end of that match. Uh, and we'll be headed over to match three uh, just shortly. So now we're going to look at match three of this Vintage League with Vintage Elementals. Match three ends up being against a four-color Fast Bond type pile. Uh, it's a pretty interesting deck. Uh, I'm not really sure what was going on most of the time. Just trying to kind of develop my own game plan and try and win based on the game plan. Uh, we are on the play. Uh, and this hand actually seems fairly decent. Uh, it's got some interaction uh, and, but, uh, we ended up not hoping to get stuck on one land, and we ended up mulliganing it. It might have been better to actually keep the, that opening hand. I'm not sure. Uh, based on what they had going on upstairs, uh, with that Cataxian Probe, Ancestral, plus Force of Will, uh, Seems to me like it's probably okay that we went ahead and kept what we did. Uh, so they went Mox, Sapphire, Lotus, Ancestral. And we try to Pyroblast that, which succeeds. And they Wasteland me. Our option is playing out this tropical island. But they also have nothing going on. We draw a Narset. <sighs> Not much happening. Preordain. They fetch. Collect Roof. Oof is fine. We Ancient Grudge the, the Lotus, uh, just simply because they can't, if they even have a way to remove the Oof, we can't, they can't use it then. So, they Gush. But they have nothing to do with that Gush, so that's cool. And just take away some of their mana options if they if we ever decide to blow up this uh, collector roof which we could and, and we go ahead and we kill the oof a merchant scroll for a force of will We'll go ahead and try and get down a Risen Reef. We're going to attempt to force it. We'll force back. Get a bolt. Narset is pretty fine. Uh, she doesn't really do a whole lot here. 
Uh, so that's that's cool. Uh, we'll try and bolt the Narset. And we'll try and stick down another Risen Reef, which we managed to actually do, which is cool. Get in there for some damage. Fast Bond is, uh, okay. Ramanap Excavator is pretty awful here, considering that they can just wasteland us out of the game. Uh, so we need to be able to find either a mountain or something. Uh, you get our mountain at least. At least we're wasteland proof here. Dryad Arbor. I was not expecting this when this came out. Like, it's a pretty wild thing to occur. Uh. And they... Go off the rails here a little bit. And I'm not really sure what they're running into here, but uh, turns out it's a green sun zenith for five to get Titania Protector of Argoth. Now, granted, there are four life here, so. Uh, there could be some so I think they try to force a will and force back get this extra turn here. And the Risen Reef in play. It's a pretty good opportunity to find uh, something. Uh, Veil of Summer's definitely not it. Uh, we do get a uh, Lotus here, though, to cast Chandra. Uh, casting Chandra is big, because this lets us peek at four cards in our library uh, with double Risen Reef. So, uh, of course, they conceded to that. Uh, we were pretty much guaranteed, I think, at this point, to find some piece of interaction like a Lightning Bolt or something like that. Uh, and having Force of Will up uh, means that we could just push through it. So, uh, it was a pretty good game. Uh, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. It looked sketchy there for a second, but uh, I think it worked out in the end. Uh, so now we're going to go on to game two. Now we're on to game two of match three of this league with Vintage Elementals. Uh, we, this was the match against four color fast bond. Uh, we are on the draw on this because they went first, or they and they lost the first game. So trying to hunt to find a reasonable hand here that does something doesn't really do much if they have a really fast uh, hand if they have like a fast bond pretty quickly. Uh, but Pyroblast plus Preordain is reasonable? Like double Pyroblast 
deals with some stuff, but it doesn't deal with uh, any of like their fast bond draws, which they could admittedly have. Like they do, there's a fast bond draw. There's Wasteland. We might as well try and pyroblast that guy. That oh, seemed okay. See what's going on upstairs. They have a Titania in hand and an Assassin's Trophy. They do have enough mana to cast Titania. And that's a little scary. Titania definitely seems like a losing losing battle here. We can try and bolt it. They're still going to get a 5-3. see what Narset gets us. But Narset gets us nothing. Uh, that would be good for a following follow-up turn. So if, and of course they have an Assassin's Trophy. They could just point it at one of our lands. They probably well know that our lands aren't... Uh, they wasteland that and they probably blow up the island and uh, with Assassin's Trophy and then we're, we're done. We don't have any blue mana. Uh, so that's awkward. So, yeah, I, I was pretty okay with conceding in this match. This is a pretty quick game. Uh, and so we move on to game three. All right, so now we're on to game three of match three of this League on Vintage and Elementals versus Four Color Fast Bond. We're going to step through this game. We are on the play, uh, simply because, again, uh, we lost uh, match round game two. Uh, this seems like a pretty halfway decent hand. There's a Daze. Uh, there's Preordain. And Force Negation. Plus, there's a Risen Reef. And I like seeing hands that have Risen Reef in them. And they start off trying for a Merchant Scroll. So we daze that bad boy. Play out the Scalding Turn. We also have two restricted delve cards in our hands, so we really have to kind of make a decision at some point which one we're more likely to actually resolve. Uh, Green Sun Zenith for two. I don't care, it's Green Sun Zenith. I'll, I'll ditch a Treasure Cruise for that. We'll get an island. Play the Volk. Play the Risen Reef. Get a Bolt. Seems pretty good. Yeah, they have Wasteland Me. Scavenging Ooze. We'll fetch and we'll bolt to the Scavenging Ooze. They exile uh, something to, to get rid of it. Oh, okay. Gush and dig through time. You know, draw with that waterlogged grove. Modern Horizons Canopy Land. It's cool that those are seeing play. Alright, so we've got Gush, we've got Dig up. We're gonna gush. Uh, and then we're going to replay a land. And we're going to pay to dig.
and they conceded to the dig through time uh, that we did have pretty good uh, stuff up for this. Uh, so we had Fluster Storm, we had Veil of Summer up. So just in case anything were to happen, uh, we would have been able to uh, fight through it to resolve this dig through time, uh, which is pretty good. Veil of Summer, especially, uh, if we had been able to resolve Veil of Summer, uh, is pretty amazing. Uh, it just gets to draw you a card, but it also, you know, all the hex proof from blue and black, also, you know, making your spells uncounterable is really, really strong. So, so that closes out that match. We're going to move on to match four shortly. Alright, so here we're on to match four of this Vintage Elementals League uh, versus another four-color Fast Pond deck. Uh, so it was interesting to see a couple of these decks around. Uh, we did lose the die roll, uh, so we do have to uh, be on the draw. Uh, I went ahead and mulligan. I was expecting possibly some sort of crazy interaction to happen turn one, and... I always like to mulligan to something that has some sort of interaction uh, in this format, uh, but we do have a Gitaxian probe, uh, so it's, it's cool. We're going to go ahead and play that out with the Wooded Foothills in play, uh, just simply because uh, Days has been showing up a little bit more, uh, but they have uh, Force Will, Tropical Island, Waterlog Grove, Wasteland, Merchant Scroll, Demonic Tutor, uh, that's not too bad. They can Merchant Scroll. And we'll go ahead and we'll Pyroblast that. I tried to daze. The cool thing is, uh, is now we get to play Gush if they decide that they want to try and wasteland us. So that's exactly what they're going to do. So we're just going to let them do it. Uh, simply because it doesn't really utterly matter at this point. Now, here's where the real fun begins. with a young pyromancer uh, that we can gush with. Uh, and that's pretty powerful. So, Underground Sea, Demonic Tutor, that's fine. Probably Demonic Tutor for Ancestral Recall. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to gush. And we get to Time Walk. So that's pretty cool. Uh, going to Ponder as well, uh, as soon as we figure out how to spend blue mana in our mana pool uh, by not being smart. Is it going to progress? Oh, okay, so we, we ponder, we, we try to do something, they actually conceded the game um, uh, to that with the time walk. So uh, that would be why it froze up for a second. So this looked pretty good. Uh, we were able to get online with this pretty quickly. Ponder really helps. Uh, the, the time walk super helped. Uh, so we're, it would look like a really good uh, game. Uh, so we're going to go on to game two here uh, and check that out. So now we're on to game two of this match four against uh, four color fast bond. Uh, of course, we didn't really know what they were doing on in the game one. We didn't see any fast bonds or anything like that. So I, I, we just kind of assumed it was a kind of a Xeroxy type of maybe bug deck. Uh, so 
This hand didn't look too good. This seems much better. Uh, we went ahead and kept that. Uh, it does have an Ancestral Recall in it. Merchant Scroll. We went ahead and we uh, Force a Negation that. I, would, I wanted to be able to resolve this Ancestral Recall. And I still couldn't resolve this Ancestral Recall, so... Uh, yeah. I was not expecting them to have just that capability, so... Uh, okay, so Force of Will. It's not really doing a whole lot. Uh, they are paying for Green Sun Zenith for scavenging use, which I can bolt, so that's cool. Gets rid of that guy. Uh, can't cast this Gush, so more than likely it's going to get pitched to a Force of Will if I need to. Uh, because choices that you have to make. Uh, mountain. Still not looking good. Uh, I'm not thrilled with it. Mox Jet. Four mana cost cards. Maybe casting Treasure Cruise. Green's the same for three. And we'll counter that. Well, we still can't cast Treasure Cruise. We can't cast Veil of Summer here. Obero Palace in the Clouds. That's a uh, very interesting card. Try and cast this young Pyromancer. Well, they abrupt Decay it. So, there's a whole lot of nothing going on in this game so far. And I can't cast this Risen Reef. But I can try and cast this Treasure Cruise. And my opponent hard casts Force of Will. My gosh. Brainstorm. I'm still not sure what they're doing. I think this is another Green Sun Zenith. Quite possibly. But I just, I end up seeing there's just not much I'm going to be able to get into this game uh, if they're casting a big Green Sun Zenith like that. Uh, so, let's go ahead and go on to game three. Alright, so here we are now on to game three of the four-color fast pawn match. We still have yet to see a fast pawn in this particular scenario. Uh... But we did see some stuff like gra Green Sun Zenith and that sort of thing. So Graph Digger's Cage came in uh, from the sideboard to kind of help deal with that. Uh, we're going to play out the Strip Mine, put them in a position where fetching in step is a bad idea. Let's see what they're going to do. Underground Sea. Underground Sea. I'm going to try for Narset. We're going to daze the Narset. And we're going to strip my... We're going to try for our Risen Reef here. Risen Reef gets back Renin 6. So that's cool. Scavenging Ooze is obnoxious. We're able to at least do 
that much to try and cut it off. Whether that's good enough, well, they ended up with another... So now we have to force them to exile a card. Uh, I guess we'll try for our own Narset. We don't really care about them attacking into somebody. Uh, they are going to attack Narset, which is just fine. get ancestral try and buy back to strip mine but it's not going to happen really we're just ticking up ran at this point yeah he's going to kill the narset Killing the Narset is probably fine because uh, I don't feel like protecting the Narset. Uh, considering that we do have a young Pyromancer. And as soon as I make this Risen Reef trigger, uh, they actually conceded the match. Uh, so uh, we had a pretty good uh, line here of whether or not they would do anything. Uh, so we could force pitch force. Uh, we could also cast Fail of Summer with this setup and continue to draw more cards. Uh, so it seemed like a pretty good uh, way to get around some things. Uh, and, of course, we'd activate Ren, but they were not going to be able to let us get that back at that point. But we won the match anyway, so it's all good. So we're going to move on to match five, the fifth and final match of this league. So we'll be there shortly. So now we're here looking at match five, the fifth and final match of this Vintage League on Vintage Elementals. And we're going to uh, step through this. This is against Jeskai Dreadhorde. Uh, so this seemed like a reasonable hand. It's got Daze plus Pyroblast. Uh, seemed fine to, to keep this. to do nothing here. Uh, seems fine to try and go for this time walk with Pyroblast back up. And also seems fine to try and go for this Narset, part of Reveals. <laughs> and that prompts an instant response. And they're a Pyroblast at Narset. Or days. And it's fine that Narset doesn't resolve because we have a second one and they wasted a bunch of resources. Uh, so let's go to. They do nothing on their turn, just play another. Uh, let's try for a second Narset. Pyroblast is a thing. It's a pretty good card in this uh, current climate of Vintage, uh, though, so I can't really uh, complain here. Uh, it looks like they're probably going to try for their own Narset, so we'll Pyroblast theirs. Uh, and off to the races we are. Now we get to try for a Risen Reef. And, coincidentally, puts another Risen Reef in hand, plus a Force of Will, so... We have a Force Plus blue card up uh, and ability to kind of get going off to the races here, so.
Right, brainstorm. We might get lucky and get to resolve a second Risen Reef here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and try for this Gush, first of all. We're going to force will the Gush. That's fine. A second Risen Reef. Uh, is it running six? Let's see what we got going on upstairs. Monastery Mentor. That's awkward. Would have been nice to draw into another blue card at that point. Monastery Mentor is a pretty good magic card against this deck. Uh, it goes wide really quickly. Uh, and that's the awkward thing about it. Not having another blue card here is really awful. To capitalize on these Risen Reefs plus these... This young Pyromancer. Shattering spree and get rid of my Moxen. Really, at this point, they're just wanting to make creatures. And they're swinging on Ren. It's actually okay that they're swinging on Ren, but not finding anything here is really awkward. Shirt Mine's pretty good. We still have a chance to kind of do some stuff here, but uh, we can cast this Force of Will, hard cast. Uh, so that's actually not that bad. Uh, Mox Emerald, sure. Uh, I don't really want to cast this Master of Waves for fear of not being able to cast the Force of Will. So now they're going to do something. We're going to go ahead and Force of Will. Oh, I draw that. Draw that. Arcanist is a problem. And that should not be around, so. Uh, Ancient Grudge is not bad. Uh, but we're gonna try and stick this, stick another Risen Reef. Drawing three cards here. Uh, Preordain. And they concede to that because the value that we're getting at this point with Triple Risen Reef is just really, really gross. Uh, every time we're casting a spell, we're drawing three cards, plus also whatever we do with that spell. Uh, so that's uh, that in itself is absurd. And of course, that will find us enough counter magic to push through a Master of Waves the following turn. So that would be pretty good. Alright, so we're on, on to match game two of match five. So here we are in game two of match five. This is uh, against Jeskai Dreadhorde with Vintage Elementals. We're on the draw in this game uh, uh, just because we lo we won the game before. Uh, Mulligan here. Uh, I did bring in Graph Digger's Cage because I wanted to be able to uh, deal with Dreadhorde Arcanist. Uh, and that seemed okay. Uh, we're going to try for a turn one. Uh, we get a turn one run and six, and being able to plus it, or minus it to kill that. They bolt my run and six, no. We get Ancestral Recall. I'm just going to stick a Chandra out there. Make two elementals and attack with them. Start the clock rolling. 
going to try and force a negation that ancestral recall that they got. Really, at this point, it's let's delay. Now I kind of don't want to cast this Craft uh, uh, Digger's Cage unless I see an Arcanist, uh, just because I want the option to be able to flash back with Chandra if I have to. Uh, strip mine's pretty good. Uh, strip mine of the volcanic. It's crazy how this this is a game I lose. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, but it, it's crazy how well uh, my opponent played this game uh, with the the pressure I was putting on it. I'm just going to attack with these elementals some more. Get out there. Because mainly they have a whole lot of nothing they're doing here. And uh, they try to resolve a dig through time here, which they they manage to do because we can't daze it or anything like that. Uh, and this hand is nuts. Uh, their hand is quite literally uh, just insane uh, for this kind of thing. Force negation, Narset, uh, preordained pyroblast, time walk. Uh, there's so much goodness here that we're not we're not getting through any of it. And they resolve Narset. We try to daze it. This is a weird interaction, so I dazed it and it couldn't be countered. So that was kind of fun. Uh, try for these two elementals here. Get them, get in there with the beats. And my phone opponent finds a monastery mentor. I should have tried to force the Monastery Mentor, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to because of the Pyroblast. I'm going to use Chandra to flashback Taxian Probe. Force Negation. Pyroblast. Dak Faden. They're an attack. They make the smart block here. We'll cast that Grafticker's Cage. We're on the ropes, though, already. Uh, two mentor tokens uh, is pretty obnoxious, and this Dak Faden is really good here. And they get rid of Chandra. They have just so many answers in their hand uh, that it's going to be really hard to resolve them. And... I don't know exactly what they did there. They didn't dig themselves. They're gonna make me discard two cards.
But anyways, uh, so I conceded to this game. Uh, the mentor at this point, me discarding, I was not going to win this game. Pyroblast, Force Negation up. Uh, just all sorts of stuff happening in this game. Uh, so if I'd have hit a, another blue source a little earlier with, um, or like a fetch with Renin 6, uh, that might have been halfway decent. Uh, so, but, uh, unfortunately, just wasn't in the cards to happen. So we're going to go on to match three, or game three, sorry, here in a second. So we're on the final game of match five of this Vintage League. Uh, again, this was a 5-0 Vintage League. We are on the play because we lost game two. Uh, and I kept this because it has some interaction uh, and a draw spell. So... Has some, some stuff going on in it. Mm, ancestral Recall seems pretty, pretty solid. Uh, we will probably be casting that on our opponent's upkeep and having ourselves a grand old time. We're going to cast Containment Priest, which is like, okay, I'll, I'll bolt your Containment Priest. Uh, I'm not sure, even sure why they brought in Containment Priest, but they did. Uh, their Ancestral Recall. <laughs> they force the force. So they get to resolve their Ancestral. I get to resolve my Ancestral. And now we're doing stuff. And Ponder. Ruby. I'm going to strip the Volcanic, or Preordain, and we get to Renin 6, which is pretty cool. And also, we're going to cast a Scrap Digger's Cage, just in case they get a, online with a, a guy. So this Time Walk was on here. Uh, instead of going for Ren, uh, I, went, I go for the Time Walk first uh, to try and bait some counter magic. This also gives us uh, mana for Veil vale Summer up this turn. So we don't get to strip this turn, but they are going to try and force negation that. And Veil vale of Summer uh, does that for us. Uh, then we also go get to go Lotus. We get to Delve. here. And we get to resolve Dig Through Time. And this Dig Through Time can't be countered. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, so we're going to get back uh, Force Negation and Gush. We can Gush in response to something and hopefully draw a blue card for Force Negation. Uh, that would be the idea at least. Alright, so now we get to play Strip Mine, Target, Recur, Strip Mine. And we have all sorts of interaction up. Pyroblast. Lavinia, we're going to Pyroblast. And they concede to the Pyroblast on Lavinia. Uh, we have Strip Lock with uh, Renin 6 up. Uh, and Force Negation plus Gush, uh, which means we can really just kind of go to the races here and kind of get through uh, everything that they're going to throw at us. So, pretty cool. So, that ends that league, and of course, that means we did go 5-0 with this league. Uh, so, I'm going to record some thoughts here uh, on the deck uh, with the deck list, uh, and then 
I'm gonna go, we'll head back to the video. Thanks guys for watching. Alright, so after reviewing the league that we played, uh, I feel like this deck is pretty good, actually. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the deck does a lot of different stuff. Uh, most notably, uh, that interaction between Young Pyromancer and Risen Reef is really, really, really amazing. Um, I have gone ahead and made a few changes to the list to going forward. Uh, going forward, I cut Pulverize from the sideboard. Uh, Pulverize felt always never really so good in all of my testing with this deck. Uh, and I did not feel it was needed with all of the additional artifact destruction, like the main deck Ancient Grudge, uh, Triple Shattering Spree, Collector Oofs, that sort of thing. Um, so the thing I was worried about is the fact that um, one of the decks that's obviously the big deck of the format right now is Jeskai Dreadhorde. Yes, we were able to play around with it uh, in these decks in this uh, particular instance, but Monastery Mentor in general is also really, really, really awful for this deck. Uh, so I threw in a copy, and it's so super narrow to do this, of Sulfur Elemental. Uh, so not only is it Elemental, uh, but also it's an Elemental that uh, plus one, minus one uh, for white creatures. This, you can't respond to this uh, because it's a, not a trigger, it's just a state-based uh, state based effect. Uh, so And it has Flash and Split Second. So that's really, really strong uh, against this kind of decks. It's also a uh, consideration against uh, some of these decks like uh, White Eldrazi that are playing cards like Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, uh, and also cards like Glow Rider. Um, what's the other one? They play Vrinwing Mare on occasion. Just all the non-creature spell stack f stacks effects. Uh, and you can get rid of them in one fell swoop with Sulfur Elemental. And then Ren and Six can help clean up some of the other stuff uh, in that deck, plus your Lightning Bolts and that sort of thing. Uh, the only other change I've made to the deck so far is, in the main, I went ahead and I trimmed the Wooded Foothills uh, for a fourth Scalding Tarn, uh, and hopefully see how that goes with it. Uh, I have honestly been considering uh, working in a meme copy of uh, Omnath, Locus of the Royal, uh, and that card seems pretty funny. Uh, but uh, I don't know that it does anything really for the deck uh, outside of just uh, shooting them in the face with a bunch of damage, possibly. Um, so I don't know that it's that good. I don't know that it's as good as Master of Waves is, uh, whereas Master of Waves makes like generally anywhere from 2 to 6 power on board, uh, and that's just by himself. Uh, so I'm pretty, pretty, that card's pretty solid, so. Uh, so not much else really uh, to do with this list. Uh, I really, really am very, very happy with it, honestly. Uh, Chandra Acolyte of Flame is probably one of the more interesting cards in the deck. Uh, it does really push through damage. It does a whole lot of other stuff, uh, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the card I've been the most impressed with um, has been Veil of Summer, uh, because that card is just really amazing design, uh, I feel. So uh, I'm really, really happy with that card in general. Uh, but uh, And I've been really, really happy with the Singleton Renin 6. I don't know if this deck actually needs two to three of these copies of this card, because uh, I do think you want to have room for Narset, you want to have room for Chandra, because Chandra flashes back cards, but also uh, draws you cards at the same time. Uh, so I don't know what you want to do there, but you could also play without the Renin 6 if you want to play this deck. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely 100% needed. Uh, I ended up shaving a Mystical Tutor for Run and Six, because uh, Mystical Tutor always felt sort of clunky. Uh, I know some people are playing cards like Misdirection now in the format because of uh, being able to misdirect like Ancestral Recall and that sort of thing. I've seen it on occasion, uh, but it's this deck's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're looking for something that's kind of fun in Xeroxy, uh, but also has a kind of a cute interaction to it, uh, that also gets around Narset part of Reveals, this might be a deck you might want to look at. Uh, Risen Reef, uh, so, I mean, the reason it gets around it is because all you're doing is looking at the top card of your library, and if it's a land, you can put it into play tapped. 
Uh, if you don't, you put it in your hand. Uh, you don't have to put it in, into play tapped. Uh, I've mentioned before uh, through this course of this series uh, that if you want to, you can always just put it in your hand. Um, I almost always put it in my hand. Uh, it's very rare that I put a land into play with uh, Risen Reef, and it's just because uh, I like to bluff. Uh, in, in a format like Standard, where Risen Reef is seeing play, like in the Rug Elementals list there, uh, putting a land into play is solid. You always want to do that because of the fact that you want to accelerate uh, your ramp uh, with that uh, card. With R Risen Reef in this kind of shell, where you're using it as a value engine with Young, young Pyromancer, uh, you really are just using it to draw cards. Uh, and drawing cards, instead of uh, putting a land into play, drawing a card may tell your opponent that you have something in your hand that, that you drew that was good. Uh, and that it maybe wasn't a land. Uh, so if you're always drawing with it, uh, they're never going to know what, what if you're pulling a land or not, uh, which is really, really, really strong interaction. And it's also just strong bluffing uh, is really what you're trying to get at there. So um, I might want to make a, another room for another copy of Pyroblast, but I kind of consider Veil of Summer my third Pyroblast. I really like the card. I think it's an amazing card. Uh, so, uh, Reclamation Sage could come out at some point. Um, I've been seeing a lot of these fast bond type decks, and so I don't really know that uh, I want to get rid of something that destroys an enchantment. And that was like the most convenient thing I had available to me at the time was Reclamation Sage. Um, could try something else. So, but. Those are my thoughts on this deck going forward. Uh, we're going to get back to the main video now, so thank you guys for checking it out. Alright, and we're back. And so now we're on to a section called Other Tidbits of Information that is going on in the Vintage World. If you guys were not aware, there is a Vintage Format Playoff that is an additional Format Playoff that's coming up on uh, October 9th is when that's supposed to be coming up. Uh, so if you are not already queued and you want to uh, get queued for that, or if you are planning on playing in another one and need to play in one to get to the format championships, there is going to be two more opportunities for that, once in October and once in December. Uh, they added another one uh, due to some issues with the modern playoff event that occurred reaching the cap. Uh, and So they had another one to get people an opportunity to be able to get in and get into that. Uh, but they did it for everything, uh, so that's kind of the awkward part, but it's okay. Like, they're going to have uh, new stuff going on, and uh, it'll, it'll be fine. Uh, you know, It's a little bit of a bummer if you're already queued for the format championship because they do increase it to the top 40 instead of top 32, and there's going to be some pricing adjustments there, but... It's not going to be that big of a deal, guys. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. It'll be, it'll be good. Uh, so other things are going on. Uh, you know, uh, just kind of paying attention to what's going on in the community. Uh, Throne of Eldraine is out uh, and looks pretty cool, pretty promising. Uh, you can read my uh, set review of that on mtggoldfish.com. Uh, I wrote a, a, a set review for that particular set. Uh, so if you go down to the below and check out my uh, set review for that set, it's, uh, there's some pretty cool cards in it. I'm pretty happy with a lot of the set. Uh, it's a neat set. Uh, it definitely has a lot of interesting flavor to it. Uh, I'm a big uh, Vorthos fan, uh, so I did get a chance to actually sit down and read uh, The Wildered Quest, uh, which was the ebook that they released uh, for Eldraine. Uh, which stars uh, Rowan and Will Kendrith, uh, as well as our big boy friend Garuk, uh, who is, uh, by the end of the book, uh, spoilers, uh, spoiler alert, uh, you know, if you haven't read the book, uh, fast forward to the end, uh, but uh, big spoiler of the book, obviously, is that Garuk does get cured. Uh, if you do see the card, uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, uh, Garuk ends up cured of his uh, deadly... Uh, chain veil curse at the end of the book and that's pretty cool i was pretty happy with how they left him off as a character uh it was very interesting uh he's a really really cool character in this book uh, they did a good job with him 
Uh, and by the end of the book, he has decided that he's going to go off and try and help uh, Rowan and Will, uh, who end up sparking and planeswalking for the first time at the end of the book. Uh, so they uh, end up on an unknown plane. Garuk decides, I'm going to go help these two because I did everything in their power to help me. And that's pretty cool. It was a really neat uh, way to do things. So... Uh, as far as everything else that's going on this month, uh, I've got a little bit of a legacy stuff going on. I just had uh, Magic Fest Atlanta, uh, wrote a little bit on that. Um, looking forward to this month, uh, have got a Team Serious Invitational uh, with our good friend Nat Mose over at his house, uh, full proxy vintage, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're celebrating the birth of Nat's son, uh, and that'll be a really neat uh, time to have. Uh, but we're also going to sit down and sling some cardboard and uh, have a good time, and it's going to be pretty fun. I'm probably going to be playing Elementals for it, uh, just because the deck's been pretty great, and I've been really enjoying it. Uh, so I just, I'm just i looking forward to it. Uh, the rest of this year, uh, right, this rest of this month, is eh, it's going to be fine. Uh, my daughter just turned five, and uh, we're going to be uh, pretty excited about that. She's just an excellent kid. and <laughs> so. But, uh, yeah, so uh, a lot going on. Uh, there's going to be some middle school stuff going on, I'm sure. Uh, you know, probably some middle school stuff. we got Eternal Weekend at the end of the month. Uh, I am looking forward to Eternal Weekend, uh, and I'm going to do some talking about that on this next episode. Uh, because uh, I'm really curious to see how things turn out in Eternal Weekend this year uh, with the restrictions and with them possibly talking about restricting, unrestricting other stuff, maybe even unrestricting cards like Necropotence and uh, Windfall even. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, so I'm super excited to hear about that, but I really am just excited to, about Eternal Weekend in general. I, I can't make it this year. Uh, I don't have enough vacation. There's a lot of other stuff going on uh fundage wise that sort of thing um so i really wish i could make it this year um but i can't uh so i'm gonna be here watching uh writing uh doing this little uh video series about that kind of stuff and uh hopefully uh, we can talk about some of the cool stuff that we did get to see on camera at uh eternal weekend next month and uh hopefully it'll be a pretty cool weekend uh if you are going and you want to say hi uh shoot me some pictures or whatever hit me up on twitter at volmarath xp uh i would definitely be down for that uh john just if you want to like shoot me some on the side on the scenes coverage talk to me about what's going on out there uh i i'm i'm there i'm gonna be in coverage all day that that day for vintage uh watching the vintage top eight on sunday uh it's just gonna be a really exciting weekend uh and uh it's it's champs what do you expect it's gonna be super exciting so anyways uh that's about all the time we have this month. Uh, again, if you guys would like to uh, follow me on YouTube, subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, follow me on uh, Twitter at VolrathXP. Uh, I do have a Twitch. Uh, uh, VolrathXP is my Twitch name. Uh, streaming is really hard right now, but uh, we'll get there at some point. Uh, I also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash VolrathXP uh, over on the right. Right. Anyways, uh New, new time doing this stuff. Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, if you would like to see, see more and see what I, uh, I'm up to, uh, follow me in those places. If you want to support what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Please subscribe, consider subscribing to me on YouTube. Uh, it really does help. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on right now. Every little bit helps. So with that, on that note... We're going to get out of here. You guys keep having a good time playing Eternal Magic. You guys keep having a good time playing Vintage. Love and life. Cue the music. <laughs>